so we're back. Welcome back to the Southwoods Homestead and Landscape Design Series. This is Dan Halsey. This is our first assignment that we're going to get to now after our presentations about uh, landscape design and permaculture. And uh, this is the handout called the Practice Activity Drawing a Site Map. And on the back is a little guide for taking measurements on your home site. Uh, this is more for a residential site, but it really applies to whatever size site you have for taking the correct measurements for doing your base map design. But this is our first activity, and it involves making sure that we have good numbers and we understand the context that we're drawing our picture, right? So uh, in this case, we have a small lot. And all we know is the size of the lot and how far the corners of the house are from the property line, right? A lot of times that's the easiest way to go. Or you can, you can measure the house or the building and then measure one corner and how far it is from the north and south property line. And then also making sure that you have it uh, turned correctly, oriented correctly, and you just draw the box. So we're going to do uh, the property line, get our paper down. Uh, do our um, orientation of the house, put the windows and the doors in, the front door, the picture window, using the correct uh, symbology for this, property line, utility lines. We really want to make sure we use the same language as everybody else in our industry, in landscape design, if you're working with a carpenter, whoever that might be, we want to make sure that we have the right language so that they understand that we actually know what's going on. Uh, if you just show up there with a crayon drawing, uh, they're not going to take you very seriously. But you come up with a nicely designed space, they'll at least talk to you and want to know more. Existing trees, gas meter, un uh, AC unit, things like that, driveway, roads, fences, stuff like that. So we're going to do this assignment. In the meantime, though, we've got to find out what our tools are for doing this. First tool we have is paper. This is just 11 by 17 sheet we'll use for this assignment. But there are other kinds of paper that we use also. This is eight scale paper. It has one inch grid on it with uh, eighth inch grid inside of it. And this is what we call eighth in, eight inch, eight scale paper. And it's on a vellum and as you can see, it's a fairly transparent. This kind of paper is really nice to dry on, draw on. Um, and also it can erase quite easily using the right kind of eraser, a gum eraser, or a kneaded eraser rather. So eight scale paper like this is what we use to start our base maps and there's also 10 scale. So, and you can break up the 10 scale into 20 and 30. This is more for eight, 16, 32, and uh, uh, using the rule of eight for uh, your scaling of your design, which we'll, we'll talk about. So there's scaling paper that we work with and this is vellum. You can also get this vellum without the lines on it when you're doing your final design. But this is for the base map. And if you have this kind of paper and you use the grid, sometimes you can even get away without having to have a T-square and a drafting table because the grid just keeps everything square for you. All right. Then we have what's called bumwad, basically just tracing paper. But by the roll, because we use a lot of this, we do a lot of experimentation. We play with our drawings in the bum water with a soft lead pencil and go through lots of that. And it also has very transparent so you can put it over and under our designs as we're working and laying things out, making sure that it's registered and we understand where things are going. Very helpful after the base map is done. And anytime you want to get creative. By the way, if you want to carry your designs around, you need a tube to put them in. Vellum rolls up really nicely. Oops, the other tube fell off. Vellum rolls really nicely and it doesn't uh, keep its shape. So if you roll it up and roll it back, it lays flat. That's what's nice about vellum. Regular paper gets a memory in it and won't do that so well. So there's tubes like this you can get at art stores. There's also tubes like this that are just uh, at uh, mail stores or things like that, uh, postal office or Kinko's, places like that. And these are cheap, but if you can find these used, they're like 50 cents, or you might even have some laying around. So the other ones are 10 or 15 bucks. These are like 50 cents, these kind of tubes. All right, so we have our paper down. 
What are the tools that we're going to use? Well, we've got to measure things, and there's lots of different ways to measure. There's lots of different rulers, right? Well, they all pretty much do the same thing. This is an eight scale ruler, okay? This is a, a uh, landscape ruler. There's also engineering rulers that are 10 scale. I don't think I have one here for that. Yeah, this one is, this old wooden one. Goes by 10s, 20s, and so what, what that means is every inch, there's 20 lines, right? 20 inch, 20 hash marks to the inch, or basically what we say is 20 feet to the inch. This is eight feet to the inch. Uh, then we have quarter scale, which would be four feet to the inch. And so the numbers on the ruler going back and forth in different directions are actually by fours. And so where there's an inch, you'll see an eight, right? So that's eight scale. It's good to have a good ruler like this. There are plastic ones, there's metal ones. If you want to spend the money, metal is really nice, but the plastic are cheap. And you probably get three or four of those for the price of a metal one. Um, also, I use eight scale a lot. And because you're always putting this ruler down and having to find out, okay, where is it? Um, I have a Sharpie line on the 8 scale side, so I can always find that because I'm always setting the ruler down and not being able to find my space. So these are architectural, and then there's engineering, and the architectural ones are the ones we use for landscaping. This is 16 scale, 8 scale, 3 eighths, 1 quarter, a half, so that's like 2 feet per inch on this one, 32 feet. 3.30 seconds, not quite sure what that is, an inch. Um, odd sizes. Anyway, those are the scaled rulers that we use for design. Most of the time we use eight scale or fractions thereof. But if you have a big property, you might get into the 10 scale, 20 or 30. And I've done even properties at 50 scale, one feet per inch, or 50 feet per inch, excuse me. Um, if you do need a T-square, right? Very nice, you put it on the side of your table and it keeps you square as long as you have a table with a nice clean edge. You can put it along the edge and you'll always have that straight line going across your paper. You orient your paper that way too. You use your T-square and tape everything down so everything is square relative to the side of the table. And then with that you have a triangle so that you can do your verticals also. So this is what we try to do is use a T-square to get everything straight and then we use our triangle to go back and forth with verticals. And if you need to do a lot of verticals, it's really easy to do that. You just slide it along and do your verticals, like when you're doing fence posts and things like that, because you already have your, your, your lines in there. So that's the triangle. You're going to need some kind of a compass. Here's a cheap little school compass. Works well, just jam a pencil in there. Work with that, it even gives you degrees and things. You measure it with your ruler, make your circles, however you need. Here's something that your great uncle or grandpa might have had it was uh, sets of these and some of them have either ink or they have lead holders and they just take lead right in there. And these are actually pretty nice to work with. They're very sentimental. And then there's this kind also just again a little bit more expensive one but some of these have pen on one side and pencil on the other side and they work also. These are a little bit more precise than those cheap cheaper ones from uh, for the school kids might get because it's spring loaded and it's a little more accurate. It also has a nicer handle on the top. So a compass works really well. You need pens and pencils. These pens are what we use after we've used our different pencils. And there's lots of different sizes, but HB is very soft. And then you go three, four, two, three, four H and get harder. When you're just starting out and drawing, you might want to use a two and three or even a four H pencil, which draws really lightly. Then after you're done, go back and fill it in. Here's a 2B, which is actually really soft and something that we might use when we're doing our uh, bubble maps or we're doing some rough drawing. They have little ways to keep your pencil sharp so you don't have to keep running to the pencil sharpener. Gives you a nice edge. The other thing you can do is just as you draw a line, you just twist your pencil uh, to keep a sharp edge on that. And then if you want to finish it off really nice, go back over it with a nice small pen. These are our uh, really thin line. This is a, a 0.3 millimeter point on this one. Very clean edge. This is Micron brand. There's a few other brands that I, that I work with, but these are all sold at art stores. The line thickness, line weight is very important in design because the trees are thicker because they're higher and they're broader. And then when you have to get down in a lot of detail, you want to find a little bit thinner pen to use with that. 
Uh, you can buy eraser pens, which are really nice when you want to erase. And then the other thing you need, this is just the last little piece left of this, but this is a kneaded eraser. And kneaded erasers are just that. They're soft and they stay soft and they really bring up the lead off the paper very easily. They, you, you get a little bit more than this, obviously, uh, when you're working, but it just rubs on there and takes off the ink. A little sharpener. So those are the pencils that we need for our work. I'm going to keep a couple out here for us to use. Nice little pencil box. When you're drawing trees and when you're drawing uh, shrubs and things, you need some stencils. These here are in uh, metric, so uh, when I work in Canada or I work somewhere where they're used to metric, we have metric stencils. And then we also have the ones that are fractions of an inch, eighth of an inch, but they also have the decimals on there also. So there's a lot of different kinds of stencils, but really you need some that are small, some that are big, and then also once you get up the trees and thing, maybe something that's a little bit bigger. These are rather expensive to buy, so if you find them on sale, grab a couple. Um, they're really nice to have, and you can just put them in your notebook and use them as you need them. You need to tape things down uh, using masking tape or drafting tape is best because it's like a little stickier post-it note, a little easier to work with. Don't use strapping tape. Don't use electrical tape. And don't use this cellophane tape either because they stick to the paper and they rip it, whereas the drafting tape just comes right off and you can actually use it a couple times if you want. It's also really nice to have a little brush so you don't smudge. And speaking of smudging, uh, no, I'm not a biker, I'm not a, a thug, but I wear one of these gloves when I draw because my hand gets kind of, you know, wet as you're working and it makes a lot of smudging. So I use a glove, fingerless glove, when I draw to keep from smudging the paper. I found that it works really well. Um, and you can share the other one with a left-handed person. These are called French curves and we're doing some really strange curves. You want to get a nice, nice clean look because we want curvilinear designs in our spaces, right? These are great for making little ovals and you kind of learn how to use it and you draw a line and you move it some more and you draw some more. It's kind of an art to using these things, but it's great for making a nice clean curve because that's what nature does. It's all done with curves. So we have all of our tools. Oh, one more thing to show you. After the French curve, you can also buy one of these or you can actually make a curve, make it work the way you want to and it's a little bit easier to hold it down, a little bit easier to draw around if you want to make a nice round curve. It's got that just enough tension to it where you can make the shape that you want, put it down and it'll basically hold that for you as you go around. It's a really nice aid for making a circle. So, let's move on with our assignment for tonight. I'll be right back.